I am quite good at some things, but um, multitasking is not one of them. So, um, anyway, so, yep, my name's Paul, I'm Spark at Leeds, um, and, oh, my screen has gone down. <laughs> so this is the title of my talk, How You Apart at Liverpool, or The Art of Bloody Mindedness. Because climate change is a hard thing to deal with, and making actions, and taking actions is also a really hard thing to deal with. So, back in 2020, an article about being crowd from Liverpool caught my eye. There was £100,000 up the grab to do something cool in the city. It seemed like a perfect opportunity. You know, you submit the crowdfunder, you get the crowdfunder sorted, complete it, you deliver your project. Simple, right? Little did I know it was going to take up three years of my life. All we needed to do first was have a good idea. I had the perfect idea. It was so good that I can't actually remember what it is now. The crowdfunding team didn't like it and they had to find anything else that I was thinking about. So I had been reading a very dangerous book. So Rob Hopkins is the founder of the transition movement and he's the person who introduced me to the idea of what if questions. What if questions are a way of resurrecting your imagination, finding positive and exciting ways to address the issues of our world. They give hope rather than fear. This book contains many stories of crazy and imaginative things people have done all around the world. It's a handbook for making the world a better place. Within this book is the story of Parking Day. In 2005 in California, a group of artists were quite skint and they couldn't afford to rent a studio. They realised the cheapest um, real estate space in LA was uh, parking spaces. So they paid for a parking space for a day, they laid out a bit of grass, a tree and a bench and they sat back to see what would happen. Lots of magical things happened and that became Parking Day, which is a phenomenon that took over the world. So that gave us our, it, it piqued my interest and it gave us our what if question. Parking Day speaks to a lot of the issues in Liverpool. It's a city that's dominated by cars. It's one of the worst metropolitan areas in the UK in terms of cyclists and pedestrian deaths and injuries. Over a thousand people a year in the Liverpool city region die and those deaths are related to air pollution and climate change. Pavement parking is also a plague. It is so claustrophobic, it feels very claustrophobic in the city. It's difficult for pedestrians, it's particularly difficult if you have any additional needs, accessibility needs, or like me, you've been recently pushing around a pram. Um, lots of people seem to not even see all the cars all over the pavement. Transition takes action on climate change globally by working on projects to address impact locally. In Liverpool, this means safer streets and cleaner air. So we had our what if question and a way of showcasing a different use for urban space. We launched the crowdfunder with some trepidation in June 2020 with a goal of reaching our target by September 2020. Our original idea was to take over a single street in Liverpool city centre for a weekend and to hold a festival of pop-ups. We were going to work with Make CIC, who were going to actually bring the build, bring the parks together. They're a group of crafters and creatives. So we also needed a shiny new website, for which we approached our good friend Neil from DefNet Media, who's also doing the film for us today. We talked about it on radio stations. We had social media campaigns on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We made these very cool little flyers, which are designed to look like a parking ticket, and we put them on people's cars across the Liverpool City region. We also made it into the Echo. They say there's no such thing as bad publicity. So the Echo is our biggest local paper. They did a story on the crowdfunder, which we were very excited about. However, once it went through editorial, as you can see from the URL, they went with a very interesting headline, parking spaces to be stolen. So, uh, yeah, that was quite interesting anyway. It led to some very interesting comments. The Echo, comment section, if you're aware of it, is normally a bit of a bin fire anyway. But yeah, there were some very, very interesting comments about the fact that we were stealing people's parking spaces. However, one person at least did seem to understand what we were talking about. It seems like quite a simple idea, really. So, we went on with the crowdfunder. Our strategy was good. We brought together groups of businesses and organisations who wanted to do their own pop-ups to get each partner to help with the crowdfunder and also work with the hospitality industry to provide pop-ups for trade. However, our timing was less than good. 
In June of 2020, things were starting to look up on the COVID front, with noises being made about coming out of the lockdown that began in March. In July, pubs reopened. However, by September, things were spiralling again. In October, Liverpool was in Tier 3, and by November, the country was back in lockdown again. So our plan of getting support from small businesses and hospitality was just not going to happen. Despite all this madness, incredibly, we did reach our crowdfunding total. In no small thanks to Han, who did our amazing video to help with the, um, the pop-up that we did outside of the annex. So this sounds to me that something, there was really something important about the project. It gave people something exciting to focus on for a little while during a very dark time. We had to push back the deadline and needed lots of help to get it over the line, but we made it. So who were our supporters? We began with around 40% of the pledge, donated by Liverpool City Council and the Mayoral Inclusive Development Fund. Our biggest public donor was the wonderful Annex, a group of independent businesses outside of which we did our crowdfunding pop-up. They were exactly the kind of people we wanted the project to help, so it was amazing to have their support. In addition to this, we had 90 individual donors who donated a amount range, ranging from two to 200 pounds. Having 90 people give you money to do something is a really humbling experience. Despite all this, we were still £3,000 off our big total, coming close to the deadline. The way the crowdfunder worked was that none of the money would be accepted if we didn't reach the total. As already mentioned, the desperate state of small businesses and independents and the hospitality sector had left a huge hold in the campaign. So this is where we see the strength of being part of something bigger. The National Transition Network at the end of 2020 had reached an amazing agreement with National Lottery to provide seed funding for projects across the UK. We applied and were thankfully successful. Thus ended what I thought was going to be the most stressful part of the project. The case for parklets, so when it came to start spending the money, things started to get really hard. Lots of things happened in Liverpool, not least of which was that Liverpool Council's highways team decided they would no longer allow parklets on the streets of the city. We were also in the worst of the second wave of COVID, with all of the country in T3 or 4, so it simply wasn't feasible to run a big in-person project. We were left with a lot of crowdfunded money for a project that we were not able to deliver, and that was a problem which we needed to find a way around. The case of park, parklets beyond our own ends of reclaiming urban space for people is a well-documented one. We had conviction that our project was a good one, and we also had over 10,000 reasons to keep pushing. And while we worked on bringing parklets to the streets, we were not idle. Sparkit had attracted an amazing team, and we were being approached by organisations who asked us to design parklets and outdoor installations for them. Again, bringing these to the streets met with the same challenges, but we created some amazing designs while we carried on trying to find solutions. I'm going to take you through some of my favourite designs created by Ross, our team architect. He has been volunteering with us since 2020, and without him, Spark, it would most certainly be dead. So this is the Art School Restaurant and Royal Liverpool Philharmonic Hall, the outdoor dining and performance space. This is the Pen Factory and Annex Winter Garden on Hope Street, with seating and greenery to make a focal point. And this is our biggest design so far for the Action Centre, which is a group of independents in Kirkdale. They currently have a lot of business um, with match day parking for Everton, and they're worried once that, once that stadium moves, they're not going to have a lot of use of that space. So, as it's called Spark It, it's quite an interesting idea. They wanted benches, we went and spoke to them. Once they got the idea, it sparked a conversation which led to us designing an outdoor cinema, an outdoor boxing ring, maker spaces, growing spaces. Um, and many other things as well. So again, this is the biggest design we've done so far. This may be a two or three million pound project over a number of years if we get the funding for it, but you can see how this idea really grows when people start to understand about it. As of early 2021, we had settled on a modular design which would be cheap, robust and easy to build. Materials were fairly easy to reclaim or repurpose, and we'd be able to use the materials again after a specific pop-up installation came to an end. There's many different ways that we can actually utilise the modules that we've designed. So, you know, it's easy to really customise it quite cheaply using the same basic designs. After that first lucky stroke of crowdfunders catching the eye of businesses, we had another. We were still talking to Make CIC, 
and had shared our designs with them. So when they were asked about the good, by the Good Business Festival to create some pop-ups for their event, Make asked us if we could use, or they could use our design. So we had our first real-world prototype. Incredibly exciting for the team. While all this exciting stuff was going on, we still had a challenge to overcome. We can't put a public park that's on a public street. We eventually alighted on a possible solution. So, we approached Man Island. This is possibly the most prestigious real estate location in the city. A bit cheeky, but if you're going to try something, why not try and do it big? Much to our surprise, Man Island gave us a yes. Now, it was only because of the dedication of this team, of people who supported our vision, that we got this done. Three years on from the launch of the crowdfunder, we suddenly had a prime location, a really big partner who had high expectations as the quality, safety and design, and the biggest shop window in the city for our project. The install was completed over the course of one day, with the MIG team working late into the evening, while one of their artists, Rachel, installed the decals and chalk paint on the next day. So the first Spark It pop-up is only a demonstration of the idea. It's designed to draw interest and conversation, and to get people thinking. It has already seen a lot of interaction since its installation at the end of August. We are still operating on a tiny budget, so it was amazing to be able to collaborate with our friends on Community Car Free Day on 24th of September, which saw loads of organisations take over the Mystery Park in Wavertree. The day ended with a mass bike ride to the Man Island Parklet, where the riders were met with a drumming troupe. We commissioned a video and photos for the whole day, which will help to further raise the profile of all the projects involved. So, as we're nearing the end of this installation, it is time to reflect. What have we learned? Don't start big if you're not going to follow through. It's better to start small than it is to have huge ambitions and to fall flat on your face. <laughs> um, working with local authorities is really challenging. It can take a lot of time. And if you're a small organisation who needs to do things quickly, then you, know, you need to be aware that turning a ship around the size of a local authority takes a lot longer than, than you, you can possibly imagine. Really invest in your team. Your team are the people that keep a project going. And when you are offered things, you take those things with humility, even if you didn't think you were going to have them in the first place. When we were stuck in the middle of COVID with nothing to do in the public realm, we were suddenly presented with the opportunity to work with a software engineer who designed an online virtual world for us. Last thing I could possibly imagine that we'd need for a project, and yet they offered it, we accepted it, and that enabled us, enabled us to carry on working in some way, shape or form while we couldn't actually do anything in the real world. So, new opportunities. What's next? Since we put the park in place, we've been contacted by Wilmslow Town Council, who are really interested in working with us, exploring how we can use parklets to improve their public realm in the city centre. We've been working with Transition Wilmslow, hopefully, who are obviously the local people on the ground who have got the connections and networks. So, a good, good opportunity to collaborate between two different transition groups there. We've been speaking to Wirral Council, who are really interested in doing things around the Town Centre Development Fund. And at the end of this year, we've been, end of this month even, we've been invited to give a pitch to Liverpool One for um, some park projects across their, their um, estate. We've had conversations in the past with Everton in the community. Uh, once we finish this little first stage of the project, we're going to re-evaluate re those and bring them back into the, into the mix. And we're also creating collaboration with Milap Fest, the Indian Music Festival, and Africa OEA, the African Music Festival, to enable us, when we do further parklets, to offer a cultural and music programme alongside those things. So, what's next? We need more people. We need more support. And that's not just for Sparkit, but also for Transition Liverpool. As I've said, you know, if people have skills, we don't necessarily know where they are, but if you have time and skills and you're willing to get involved, get in touch with us. We'd love social media support, we'd love content writers, we'd love event managers, but also if you have skills that you want to share, please get in touch with us because we will use them. So I'd like, like to finish with a thanks to the individual crowdfunders, to all the organisations here who have in some way, shape or form helped to get to the stage we are today. I'll just leave you with our what if question. What if streets weren't just for cars? Thank you.